this will be a little different, I think. Uh, I want to I want to do this for two reasons. A, I want this video to exist somewhere just in case. Um, B, I kind of want to critique it a little bit, a little bit. And C, uh, a very tragic event occurred last Saturday where a, a man from this video that I'm going to play for you guys was shot and murdered. Now I'll point out who that is and I'll kind of go into that a little bit, but um, is this is this screen too big? It looks too big. Okay. Whoa, jeez. Well, that's loud. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, I was not expecting that. I should turn down my speakers. I'm sorry. MSNBC. Okay. Now, Donnie. Remember back when MSNBC was actually a trusted source for anything? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> I sure shit don't. <laughs> is meant to level the playing field but does it tip the scales in favor of females that is the problem with affirmative action all it does is tip the scales that's all it does i mean i, I can kind of understand the argument of well things were bad in the past so we got to make up for it but in the case of women when were things bad in the past for women in the workforce again <laughs> They, they got protections from slave labor 80 years before children did. And God knows how long before men finally got those protections. Y you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> actually, I think it was women, 40 years later, children, 40 years later, men. I know there's 80 somewhere in there, but okay. I get affirmative action for black people because they were actually discriminated against in terms of what jobs they could have. Uh, bachelor black men especially uh, bachelor taxes were often a thing back then for everyone not just the black man but for everyone and you know so you you have um those kinds of taxes so that i get and especially for black people because there were jobs they were refused from for being black now that was mostly in the rural south mostly but it still happened in the north don't let them lie to you Still happen. Actually, it happened. I think more in the north. Actually, I forget. Uh, the north has been lying about its, you know, being all progressive and shit, and being all future with kindness towards the Negro. It's it. It wasn't. It wasn't. They wanted slavery because the South had it. A lot like feminists want things men have just because they have it. <laughs> it's much the same process. <laughs> but anyways, um. So yeah, um. So that I get, but how did women get it? It's not like women were denied fucking jobs and shit. They, I mean, they just didn't want those jobs, so they didn't apply. You know, I, I mean, okay, maybe there was a time where we didn't think a woman could do it. But that was because they didn't want to do it. That's why we thought that. It, it wasn't the other way around. I mean, anyways. From workplace favoritism to lopsided divorce settlements. Uh, not just lopsided. Fucking categorically lopsided. Like, so lopsided my testicles look even normal. <laughs> Ooh, noodles. <laughs> um, yeah, Ale's here. Say hello to the kind people there, lovely. Hello. hello. <laughs> She's tired. She didn't sleep much last night. Um, so yeah, um, again, like, holy crap. I mean... They are so lopsided. It's unreal. Uh, the most, the the wealthiest woman on the planet. Do you know? Do you know what her job was? She got a divorce. That was her job. Like that. That is how valuable vaginas are. They are so valuable. They get paid, room and board, uh, food, uh, cost of living expenses. And then after they stop using the vagina to get these things, they still get these things even more. That's how valuable a vagina is in this society. Actually, every society, really. But 
Yes, even the bad countries. <laughs> Hard to believe, I know. Some men think women have an unfair advantage. Do women benefit from sexual discrimination? Yes. Yeah, just yes. Yes. Women benefit from sexual discrimination. Blacks benefit from racial discrimination. We, we, we've just tilted the scales in the opposite direction to where being a white man is just a sin all of a sudden, <laughs> right? That That's not the right way to go. There was a time where being a black man was a sin, okay? Thank the suffragettes for that, um, okay? Being black and male was a sin. Not so much black females, but black males especially. It was a sin to be a black man. Now, the suffragettes suddenly hate white people, and a hundred years later, now it's a sin to be a white man. But it, 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 what, what hasn't changed? The man part. The man part hasn't changed. That's the point. <laughs> they don't, that will never change. That part will never change with feminists. Never. They might change their name, but they will still be male hate group number 732. <laughs> Oh, my wrist. Anyways. Donahue starts right now. Hello and welcome to Donahue. We're coming to you from Rockefeller Center in New York City. Women have fought passionately for equal rights for decades, have they? No. No, they haven't. They haven't fought for equal rights. They fought for more rights. They fought for getting things that men didn't even have. The vote that women have to this day. Only 13% of men had the vote. 13. That's not a right if only 13% of that group has it, okay? It, you know, it just, it's, yeah, so, and the fucking uh, labor discrimination laws that protected women for 80 years before they protected men, again, that that's, historically, you look at the laws, you look at the scripture, you look at the times, the time stamp on everything. Women tend to get legal rights before men. Don't know why, that's just how it happens. And that's including the bad countries. Okay, even there, women get rights before men do, for some fucking reason. Right? Now, if a society is going to benefit anybody, it's going to benefit the women. It's not going to benefit just the men. It's, it's not. Now, riddle me this, Batman. If what I said was a lie... Then why is it only Muslim men show up to women's rights groups in the Middle East? Hmm? Because women in the Middle East don't want equal rights. They're more than happy with the privileges they have as it is being in a religious caste system. Okay, because caste systems, just about all of them, I can't think of one that isn't, isn't the case, benefits women above men. Rich above poor, you know, typical stuff. Uh, and, and a lot of countries, white above black, but in the Middle East, the darker you are, the better you are. Unless you're black, in which case you were extinct 200 years ago. <laughs> or a slave. Or your genitals look like a fucking birthday cake compared to a clearectomy. Actually, I, th I think I said that backwards. Whatever. Moving on. <laughs> oh, shit. They caught up to men? Or have they surpassed them to the point that women are now getting a free ride in life from dating to the workplace, marriage and divorce, sports and the military? Here's the problem. Here's the big problem. Everything he just mentioned doesn't fucking matter. Does not fucking matter. I don't give a fuck if women are benefiting from dating. I don't care. My problem is, do women have more rights than men? That's my problem. That's my concern. And that's the majority concerns for men's rights advocates. We care about legal rights. And um, one guy later on will mention, uh, you know, social benefits of women. And then Mark kind of mentions, he kind of switches to that topic. But at first he talks about legal disparities. That's the real conversation. Don't let them fuck you over and make you think that this is some bullshit about getting free drinks or getting the door hold open or getting free food. It ain't fucking about that. No one gives a shit. The, the, the importance is 
does one group of people have more legal rights than the other? If that is true, and it is in this country, we need to fix that. I don't care who benefits. I don't care to, to what reason or benefit, you know? I mean, the Middle East kind of has a reversed approach to that, but whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever works, I suppose. <laughs> instead of instead of giving men more rights, they just restrict some from women, legally speaking. Um, you know, but they do that sort of to prevent women from falsely out, uh, accusing men, ironically. So I'm not saying they're right. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying it's what they're doing. <laughs> That's the issue tonight, and I begin with Warren Farrell, author of several books, including Father and Child Reunion, where he argues that children raised by single fathers do better than when raised... Statistically, that is true. Look at the data. On average, people raised by a single dad are less likely to get into prison, less likely to get into drugs, less likely to be what destitute. <clears throat> well, on average, yeah, less likely, yeah. I thought about the drugs. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that depends on our dad, baby. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying your dad's a drug. I'm just saying he looks like he smokes some weed sometimes. <laughs> like, I mean, that's not a lie. That's not a lie, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, he, again, he's not, he doesn't abuse anything, to my knowledge, but he, he looks like he tokes up on occasion. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it, it's probably the beard. I have a beard too, so I look kind of like a druggie. <laughs> it's just the beard. <laughs> no. It's only yeah, probably. He is a pretty chill, dude. You usually expect really chill people to be on some sort of weed or something. Usually what you expect. By single mothers. What? You're on, Dr. Farrell. Are women getting a free ride? Phil, yes, they are. And as you know, I used to be on the board of NOW, so I, I, the National Organization for Women in New York City. And If anyone knows what's actually happening to women, it's this motherfucker, okay? If anyone knows, he was on the National Organization for Women. He was on their board. He was on their panel. Um, okay. And so, yeah, um... Which kind of fucks up the feminist argument of, well, there's men in, in power positions. Yeah, there's also men on the on the now organization, national organization for women. There's also men at now. There's also men at every other feminist fucking organization that only benefits women, as they often do. That's there's always men there. Now Warren Farrell is surprisingly base for being there, <laughs> you know, surprisingly like he's not a nutter. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, and yes, now they're getting a free ride, Phil. There is a, uh, we're living in an era of the multi-option woman and the no-option man. Look at that woman. Oh, so I gotta, I gotta go back. Have to register for the draft. I gotta go back. Look at this woman's a, face. Uh, we're living in an era of the multi Look at her face. Oh my God. That scowl could melt through solid metal. I swear to fuck. Like that, that, that pinched brow the deep piercing eyes that you can see her fucking fangs sticking out of her lips a little bit and her fucking makeup is horrible but god she is so oh my god all all he said was women are getting a free ride and she she this face is like i'm cursing your soul right now <laughs> that's what that face and this chick's just like confused she's just not even paying the fuck attention and this chick behind is god knows what because being obstructed but the chick in the front in the black is just, oh my gosh, that face. Oh, God. The option woman and the no option man. Well, a woman doesn't have to register for the draft. That's Men true. Do. Um, we go out to the good restaurants. You find women still being paid uh. for. You go into education. Women are the majority in, in education, but yet they're getting the scholarships as if they're the minority. In every single area of life. She looks kind of pissed, too. A lot of these women look really pissed. Here, here's the thing. Warren Farrell mentioning in dating they get more of a free ride. That he's not mentioning that because that's his argument. He's mentioning that because that's what everyone else is talking about. Okay. Trust me, everyone. That's all anyone wants to talk about when it comes to men's rights. That's all we want to talk about is uh, women get free drinks. 
that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Now, there is inequality in terms of, like, ladies' nights and shit. But not for the reason you might think. It's not inequality because the ladies are getting free drinks. It's inequality because the ladies can grab the male strippers by the by the gonads and uh a lot of i've i've known i i used to perform down in davis uh for fire i used to spin fire staffs and i knew quite a few guys who used to hang out there that were professional dancers you know, strippers those, those kinds of types and we were talking once about their their jobs and stuff and there was like three or four of them and all of them told me and all of them were straight, by the way, like womanizing straight, not, not just, yeah, I like girls. No, like they were big into women and, and I believe they were all single mm -hmm. and every single one of them wanted to work gay nights. Every fucking one, because the men, for some reason, know to keep their damn hands to themselves. Women don't for some reason. And um, uh, re remember the cosplay is not consent thing that was going on a couple of years back? The majority of people groping people were women. <laughs> okay? That's... Don't know why. If, if, a, if a woman sees a bad-tempered shire horse, she wants to touch it. <laughs> if, if a man sees a chainsaw with a sword sticking out of it, he'll want to touch it for some reason. <laughs> like, that's just kind of how we are, really. <laughs> Um, women um, are still have very difficult lives in many cases, but they but the government yeah. plays the role of Depends. substitute husband. We go into divorce situations, and clearly the judges um, give, the, give women give the, give women to the, the woman, and, uh, and then insist on uh, child support and so on, yes, as and we, we would expect. Yeah. But you would make the point that when men get when men get the children. Uh, they don't get any financial help. They usually don't get financial help, but that's not the issue. The issue is not men's rights. The issue is not women's rights. The issue is... I want to mention this. Al, why don't you mention how much money your father was getting from your mother? About 60 bucks. 60 bucks a fucking month. I knew a guy that had to pay child support to three different women in California. He was... His rent was his friend's couch. He couldn't afford a, an apartment. He couldn't afford a place to sleep. He he had to uh, mooch off his friend. And all he could afford was food. And not even that much food. All he could afford was food. And the cheap shit, too. Like, he mostly ate ramen noodles, for God's sakes. <laughs> you know? And whenever he had a beer, it was a cheap one. It was never a... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move it in a little bit. It was never... Actually, just pan it here. I'll set it down. Um, you know, it was, it was never a fucking expensive beer. It was always a fucking cheap kind of Hispanic kind of beer, you know, but anyways, uh, that's just a guy I knew. And, but, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt him, but the children do so much better when they have an equal amount of exposure oh, those eyes. to mother and father, when the mother and father live close yes. to each other and when there's no bad mouthing between the two, right. if you want to do the best, the best bet for a child is both parents wholeheartedly best bet second best is single father just statistically you know less likely to get into drugs less likely to get into gangs less likely to to get murdered less likely to get pregnant at a young age all sorts of stuff so we just we know on average you're less likely to get a, a better run through life if you have a single father compared to a single mother um and that being said Best bet wholeheartedly is both parents. Best bet. I had both parents, and you know, I mean, I'm I'm pretty well to do in terms of the world. I like to think so, anyways. <laughs> Ale's a weird exception because she was raised really only by her father, and you know, she's not as crazy as her friends who were raised by single mothers. Just, just saying. But that, again, that's an average. It's not all cases. It's just whatever, you know. As for the children, you simulate the intact family in the case of divorce. Uh -huh. Yes. Gloria Allred. Oh, God, this woman. what you're hearing. Uh -huh. Th this woman, I know she looks like Hillary Clinton, but look, she goes on this tirade, and it sounds like she's running for a political office. I was expecting to hear Allred 20 2004. 
Like I was expecting, <laughs> I was so expecting that at the end of this. Just, just listen, listen to this gold. I obviously disagree with it, Phil, because it's ridiculous. Women are not getting a free ride. Women have a long way to go. They can't We have a long way to go. We will always have a long way to go. God, they said that in the in the twenties. They said that in the sixties. They said that in the eighties. Oh, but they're saying it in the two thousand and twos. That this was recorded like two thousand three, two thousand four. But yeah, that. Feminists always say that. Always. It's it's not changed for 200 years. It, it hasn't. It hasn't changed at all for over 100 years. Can't collect their court-ordered child support. They're forced That's onto bullshit. welfare. They're yeah, forced onto welfare. Yeah, they're forced onto getting handed free money. Fuck it. What? <laughs> I'm being forced against my will to be given things to keep myself alive. Oh, no. What? If if you want to shuffle off this mortal coil, just do a face plant like everyone else does. Fuck. <laughs> Many of them are sexually harassed on the job, being denied equal employment opportunity. Okay. Both of those are illegal. Go to somebody. You're an attorney. Go to you. <laughs> go to yourself. <laughs> go go fix yourself, Gloria. One out of three will be raped sometime in her lifetime. Oh my God! One out of th one out of th Ugh! Okay. The Congo is one out of nine. Or one out of seven. Something like that. The Congo is one out of nine. That's a fuck ton of people. The, the actual numbers I've found are like one in 37 for women, one in 39, 40 for men. And we're... And that's an old statistic, and we're starting to see evidence that the man number is actually worse than what we thought. We thought men was 1 in 37 to 41, around there. We th we think the woman number is 1 to 33 to 37, around there. Um, which is still a lot of people, but it's not no 1 in 3. What th th that, that means 1... Okay, you have a household with two girls... Okay. On average, two girls, one mother. Someone's doing something to those fucking kids. That's all, you know, if that's a true statement. One in three is ridiculous. They didn't even say one in three on college campuses. They, they, they said, what, one in seven? Then it became one in five. Now it's one in four. It just keeps getting worse as long as fucking Democrats are in charge. What the fuck? <laughs> Are battered. We still don't have the protection of the Equal Rights Amendment. The true wise Marlowe. Uh, Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, pardon? Pardon. You don't have protections of the Equal Rights Amendment. According to which lawyer? <laughs> that that's an oddly specific thing to point out. <laughs> Thomas worked so hard to win. We want our daughters to have equal opportunity, and we're going to fight to win it. Well, where is it? Oh, God. Look at this smile. Look at this shit-eating grin. Like, yeah, I just sold them political nonsense. Yay, me. Like, you know, she's patting herself on the head, fucking stroking her pearl in her rings for luck. You know, like, oh, jeez. Like, oh, God. She, oh, this woman. I swear to fuck. <laughs> God. Oh, this woman. This isn't even the... the this is the first video, guys. <laughs> but it's like nine minutes and then like seven minutes, so this isn't going to be very long. And just listen. Look, look at the audience. All women. All women. All women are just like, yeah, 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 yeah yay, yay things for girls. We want things for girls. Yay, yay girls. And it's like, oh my god. And, and it's pretty divisive because the men are like, yeah, we should have fucking, uh, you know, equal rights to our genitals. We we should have that. Like, like, and and women are like, yay, woo, nonsense, pigeon salad, elephant candle about soccer dove, pigeon turtle. Like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> The men may need security before, before this program is over. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, the editor in chief of Stuff Magazine uh, is uh, Greg Gut Gutfeld. This guy's uh, weird. Way in here. 
You've listened up. What do you I, think? Well, I, I just don't think Gloria feels strongly enough about her point. Yeah. <laughs> God, my ears are still ringing. Um, I think it's I think it's it's somewhere right in the middle. I think women should get a free ride in many cases just because they're more attractive than men. And from there, I think that's from a biological necessity. That's the way it should be. It's weird. The women are both like happy and offended at the same time. <laughs> It's kind of funny, um, but th this guy just, like, he has shoved his nose so far up Gloria's ass, I, oh my gosh, like, I gotta send in a gopher to dig that some bitch out. <laughs> now, when you get into the workplace and you get into, say, the Title IX controversies, maybe it's overstepped its boundaries, but from my perspective, from a biological necessity, right. men should take the leading role in some cases and allow women the opportunity for a free ride. Uh, Mark Angelucci is present. Okay, the guy, the name he just said, is the one who was shot on Saturday. Um. Again, my heart goes out to whoever's left, like, and to him, as as a as as a spirit or whatever you believe in. It it's a shame. It really is. I mean, he. And you'll you'll see in this video, he's a total sweetheart. He just he just cared about people. He really did. And you know, like when you see someone that genuinely cares about the human race, it just it fills you with hope. It fills you with a glimmer of God's grace, really. It it just it it makes you feel at one with God. And it's it's just it's just beautiful to see. It's just beautiful. The LA chapter of the National Coalition of Free Men. Well, shouldn't I be a member of this? Actually, I think it's National Coalition for Men, not of Free Men. I I might be wrong, but I I thought it was for men, but uh, maybe they changed it. I don't know. The thing I read earlier today said of men, not free men. But yeah, th this is the guy, uh, Mark Angelucci. He was also in the Red Pill movie. Um, he was in the Red Pill Raw Files as well. Um, he was actually close friends with Cassie J and with Paul Elam, um, and he was working on a couple of cases during the time of his death. And um, yeah, he he was. And before feminists talk shit about him as being an MRA because they hate that word for some reason, um, he was fighting a custody battle for a woman to gain custody of her daughter, and he did it pro bono. So don't tell me he only cared about fucking men, because he cared about everybody. Most of what he did was pro bono. A lot of cases most people wouldn't even touch. He did pro bono. Right. I mean, the man was fearless, and just... You'll, 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 you'll hear him talk. Free man. I'm a free man. Uh, tell me your thoughts. Well, what we've just heard here about the biological necessity unfortunately, is how most male judges and male politicians think. Um, and that's why they're constantly denying men access, free access to their children. Yeah. That's why our government spends four times more on breast cancer research than prostate cancer research, even though they kill the same number every year. Yeah, that's almost exactly the same number. The government creates right. all these offices of women's health and commissions for women right. and no commissions for men. Yeah. Uh, have you not sued, is it Borders or Barnes & Noble? Who are you... Uh, we're suing, in Los Angeles, we're suing the county of Los Angeles because they spend millions of dollars on an office of women's health and a uh, commission for women and have nothing right. equivalent for men at all. You don't want to talk about the bookstore? Well, the bookstore, that was a different issue. Bar uh, well, tell them. Why did you do it? I, uh, I petitioned Barnes. I sat outside Barnes & Noble and gathered a thousand signatures from Be both men and women equally because to get a men's studies section. Because they have an enormous women's studies section and no men's studies section, and all the men's studies books, such as The Myth of Male Power by Warren Farrell, are sort of scattered into various areas. I see. He wants to add. That's the big difference. Big difference, like the main fundamental difference between men's rights advocates and feminists. Feminists want to destroy, they want to tear down, they want to wreck and destroy and, and remove male privilege and patriarchy and kill the evil 
devil god head. That, that's that's what feminists want. What people like Mark Angeluki want is to add, to build, to give more to people. We've we've given these things to women. Let's let's be equal and fair and give them to men as well. That's all we're asking. Let's just add to what we already have. Let's not take away like a relative of mine wanted to do. She wanted to, to get rid of um, the nativity scene in a mostly Christian town uh, instead of adding. Like, I would have been totally fine if she was just like, oh, let's just add a menorah or a Kwanzaa tree or whatever the fuck they got. You know, let's just add one of those and then everyone will be, will be happy, right? That I'm fine with that. I don't give a shit adding stuff to the, like, we can add, like, a Star of David to the nativity scene. Like, it caught, cast as a shadow in the background. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, I'd be fine with that. That's, that's totally cool. But let's add. Let's not destroy. Let's add. Let's, let's create. Let's build. Right? And this is, I mean, it, 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 this is essentially what happens. I have a card, a laminated card that says, Creator. I am a creator. I identify as a creator. You're just like those destroyers over there. What? <laughs> you know, like we're... Yeah. So, I guess they're opposites in that regard, but... I mean, the opposite of... Stop mansplaining, you dirty peasant. Isn't... Can I please see my children now? I kind of love them. You know, those aren't opposites of each other. Those are totally different fucking universes. Not even connected by the seas of fate at that point. Which is a weird fucking book, by the way. And so... They're harder to find. Yeah. Uh, how messages, about ladies' night at bars? How do you feel about that? See, Three see... drinks for the ladies. See, Mark mentions... You know... Just adding. Right? Let's add books. Let, let's add a section for these books that are already there, right? Let, let's add a space. Let's add. Then Donahue mentions Ladies' Night. And some other guy's like, okay, well, do you want to get rid of it? Right? Like, they're asking to get rid of it. And it's... That's not what we're trying to do. And, and I feel like the Ladies' Night argument is just... It's, it's, it's felonious at best. It's just, it's not a good argument. Well, that's exactly, that's a small area that's symbolic of the way men are expected to pay for things and expected to be chivalrous and, right. and give in to women. Uh, and that is true. He's not lying. Taking yeah. re but what's risking wrong? chivalry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me just say, let me just say the real. She well, wait, wait, is a bullhorn with a wig. I swear to fuck. She just screams over everyone. Like, shouts down their soul. This is fucking Sindel. This is Sindel. <laughs> with the fucking skunk hair and shit. Fucking, you know, just shouting down the souls of the ether planes. And just to get her damn word in edgewise. And she doesn't even say anything. She doesn't even add anything. She just... <laughs> Whatever. Look, you know, we're three minutes in, you're already... Hang on a minute. I had to pull teeth to get you to talk about borders. Now give her a chance yeah, here for just so, a second. I mean, well, the, real e the real economic discrimination against uh, people in this country is mainly against women. I have yeah, filed lawsuits course. against dry cleaners who have charged more for women's dry cleaning for the same shirt than they've charged for men's dry cleaning. That's I a lie. And this is how I know it's a lie. A lot of dry cleaners will... Uh, use different product on women's clothing because women have softer skin they have thinner skin they have more sensitive skin right and for some reason women like things to smell good men don't care we don't care i don't i don't care if i smell like old gym socks there's no holes in my shorts i'll fucking wear them <laughs> you, you know like that it doesn't matter to us what it smells like but women want things to smell good and pretty and, and soapy and flowery and like butter pecan pinochle fucking butterfly wing peridot soap tacos. Fucking, you know, they, they, they want to smell good and, you know, it. which there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, you know, you do you, you do you, my friend, you know, like whatever. <laughs> I have filed 
filed a and I got them to change the policy. Sure yes, I have filed a lawsuit against a hair salon to charge more for little girls' haircuts than they did for little boys' haircuts. Yes. Even though it's Wait. the same amount of time, the same expertise. I filed. Uh, no. No, and this this is how. What takes more expertise? Cutting and layering, or going buzz? buzz, buzz. Okay, you're done. <laughs> or cutting and layering and braiding and putting shampoo in there and and getting conditioner and the damn cat bit me <laughs> and all that stuff. Like you know, getting all that stuff in there. Like what? What's so she's she's lying. She's lying to you guys. Lawsuits against Saks Fifth Avenue that charge more for women's alterations than for similar men's Successfully alterations. Successfully so. And right. they so and you would got support them to change him then. Their policy. But the problem is there's still widespread economic right. discrimination against women. We earn less, and then we have to pay more, right. and that's unfair. Wait, 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 wait. You earn less, and then you have to pay more. You don't pay more. Okay, you have the luxury to pay more. That that That's where they trick you. And I say it's a luxury because... What did I just mention those three times? Or two or three times. You you get the luxury of getting nicer smelling clothes, um, softer clothes. What? I will say this. Hmm. Um, she is right, but not about the pay gap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what's she right about? Do you know how many... Okay, people our age... Yeah. That's exactly what they're going through. We get paid less, but we have to, but we end up having to pay more. Well, that has a lot to do with the economy. That's not so much the well, gender I mean, she thing. Well, she is right, but in the wrong way. Okay. Oh, okay. She's right about the event, but not the gender. Yeah. Perfect. Gotcha. That makes perfect sense. Okay. But uh, just how she acts, how she moves, it, it, it. It's, it's like we're in a play in our own head. It's so crazy. It was Barnes and Noble was the object of your uh, Gloria, small demonstration. Gloria, did you also file suits against auto insurance companies and life insurance companies for charging men more simply because they're male? Um, Which has actually happened. against the government for forcing only males to register for the draft. Yeah, see, she ain't got a fucking word. And only men are clapping. Only, well, this one chick. But everyone else was a dude who was clapping. Suits against... Excuse me. Women do not earn more. They earn more based on working longer hours and more dangerous <laughs> jobs. <laughs> men. Women do not earn less. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He, he kind of messed that up word wise. Probably because some trumpet was screaming in his ear. It, this is what I hate about the word mansplaining, okay? Feminists created this word mansplaining. Basically to say, how dare you exist? Fuck you, go sit in a corner, you little simp bitch, right? Is essentially what they're saying. But it has this connotation that men interrupt more and men yell more and we scream more and we're more violent and ah in your face. When in every interview I've ever seen, Every single one where there was a feminist and an MRA, the female feminist and the male MRA, that's usually the people that they get. Not because there's more male MRAs, but just because that's who they want to pick. Every single interview I've ever seen of those two groups and those two people, the feminist shouts him down, screams in his ear, uh, has to interrupt every fucking thing everyone else is saying. And just gets all over the place and just goes crazy and makes a big ass of themselves. And every single one I've ever seen, I've never seen a man actually scream his head off at a woman. Can you imagine how pissed people would be at that guy? Oh my gosh. And, and the women do it and they're just like, well, she's just trying to get her words in. <laughs> Bitch, all she had was her words in. <laughs> Let's, yeah, interrupter. Let's, let's see if we can't all get along here. Yes, sir. Hey, guys. Understand something. The reason that a bar has a ladies' night is to attract men. Uh, That's it. Well, yes and no. Um, 
that's that's not the reason, but it's kind of it's kind of a side reason, kind of. Um, they don't have ladies' nights to attract men. If they had men's nights, women wouldn't show up, right? So it, it kind of is to attract men, but it's 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 killing two birds with one stone. It's not just to attract men. It's killing two birds with one stone. If you give free drinks to women, women will show up. Then men will show up and buy the women drinks and buy themselves drinks, and everyone starts drinking, and you got more business. But if you give free drinks to men, women ain't gonna show up. Don't know why, but they just don't. <laughs> so it, he's kind of right, but kind of not really. It is promotional. He's right about that. But again, a lot of people are talking about that specifically. They, I don't know why, but people outside of this arena cage match between feminism and the men's rights movement people outside of this all they want to fucking talk about is women getting free drinks and free food that's not the important issue that that doesn't fucking matter women just get those things because we care about women that plain and simple people care about women that's that's just that's been evident since we left the fucking caves right and there's nothing wrong with that Every person listening to this, think to yourself the following. Think, I care about women and their human rights. And you'll think that, and you'll agree with that statement. Now flip it to men, and don't turn into a liar. That's all I'm saying. Ow! You quit biting at me, you little bastard. I'll yeet you across the room. Oh, he's angry now. Yeah, mom's gonna push you off her fucking chesticles. <laughs> Is he mad? Is that what his tail's doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's mad. Oh, poor, poor kitty. He's just not happy right now. Probably listen to this fucking Blair horn of a trumpet project. <laughs> then they're in there for different reasons no. and the men are being disillusioned by what's happening in them. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, Actually, that's pretty true. I oppose. No, you heard, sir. Not in my case. No, I don't go to those bars. So I can't I remember back when I was young May I, may I respond, uh -huh. please? Yes. Yes. I oppose ladies' night at a bar. Women should not get special rights. Neither should they have lesser rights than men. This is pure butt-fucking damage control. That's all this is. She is damage controlling feminism. That that's what she's doing. She's damage controlling and making it seem like, well, we don't want women to have special rights. Yes, you do. You keep shooting down every right to equality we keep putting on the books. And, and then people turn around and say we never fucking do anything. Women should not be used as bait to lure men in. Oh god, women bait. As... Yeah, they're bait. Forget oh my god. Yeah, wait a wait a shit all over women's agency. God to lure women right. in. As a matter of fact, that's illegal sex discrimination in California. We've had I don't know how you look that, into a man's soul when you... Sex discrimination yeah, no kidding. The victim is a male or the victim is a female. Right, right. Now, I'll tell you another grievance that we're hearing more and more. Men are made to look foolish on television. Oh, on yeah. television. Yeah, in commercials. In, okay. Paul Elam mentioned that once because that's what feminists were talking about. And he got shit for it. Okay. He got righteous shit for it. Here's the problem. It doesn't matter if men are made to look stupid. It doesn't matter. That's not a human rights issue. <laughs> I mean, it might contribute to human rights issues, maybe. If, if we view them as dumber, then we might view them as less deserving of human rights, maybe. Uh, that's kind of what they did with black people back during slavery. We thought that they were so stupid that they did deserve rights, basically. <laughs> that and you had the whole caste system, just in general. <laughs> Jeez, cat, fuck. Meow.
Let me give it to you. I've got a break here. Uh, let me let me just give you uh, an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, we see it on TV in books, movies, and even greeting cards. Men being made to look stupid. What would happen if men made fun of a woman's sexual problems? How would women react? Take a look. That is actually not a bad. That's not a bad trick. It's still a trick, but it's not a bad trick because it's the gender flip. It's how how would this be the other way around? And in most cases, the gender flip does not fucking work. <laughs> you can't get away with doing that for some reason. You can't get away with, um, especially on TV, talking about women being impotent, women not being able to give birth, uh, a woman's flaccid clitoris. You can't talk about it. You, you, that's not a thing. <laughs> you know, like, can women have flaccid clitoris? Yeah, 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 maybe. Well, I I know the the glands in the vagina itself kind of fill with blood. I I mean it's it, the the genitals of the genders are much more alike than you think, like well, much then more if alike. That's the case. Then wouldn't it be possible for it to act up? True. Yeah. If if they're as identical as they seem to be. Yeah. Yeah. You might be right. I just act. I, okay. Uh, a, a bum clitoris. I mean, you never talk about a woman having a bum clitoris, right? I mean, I know some women have issues. Yeah, they're they're not sensitive down there, or they're too sensitive, or yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, stuff like that happens all the time. And same thing would happen to men. Yeah, same if thing they, happens to men. Yeah. Even if they did have a foreskin. True. Um, I I have heard of this is kind of rare, but I have heard of some men being really sensitive even even though they're circumcised and they're still like super sensitive just imagine if they had a foreskin god jeez <laughs> fucking walking fire hydrant that dude yeah. that wasn't too graphic was it <laughs> i'm not sure if that'll pass on youtube or not <laughs> anyways At, uh, i make dick jokes don't judge me one man's impotence drew a rise out of the girl yeah Roll the tape how would you feel if I gave you a cardboard cutout of a big flaccid penis? It's not so funny now, is it? <gasps> Don't you bring that flat baby in here, I will kill you! How dare you talk to me like that in front of your friends? Oh, they know all about your penis problems, and they're just sick of hearing about it! Oh, my... And the women found it funny! Start watching more cable. They thought it was funny as shit! Where that woman is dying over there! She's the dying! The new uh, new angles of uh, gender wars. People are getting upset, and many of them are men. Back in just a moment. Ha ha ha! Flaccid penis! Ha 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 ha! That's. Oh my. I'm all about equality! Ha ha ha! Flaccid penis! Oh my god. Okay, here, here's part two. Here's part two. Welcome back to Donnie. You are women getting a free ride in life. What about in the workplace? Promotions and jobs? Oh, crap. Aside for women. But in paid maternity leave, do men get the same? Nope. Peter Alamano is New York president of the Coalition of Free Men. You think women actually have it easier on the job and you um, think hurting men. Make that's that's the New York Coalition. Um I don't think he was close friends with What was the name again? Hold on. Uh no. Um I didn't didn't want you guys to see that. Okay. Um Crap, where is it? I, I just... Oh, here it is. Um, Mark Angelucci. I, I forget his name. It's very Italian. I should remember it. <laughs> I have a friend named James who's very Italian. Like, very Italian. Um, but yeah, uh, Angelucci. Unresponsive. Suffering parent gunshot wounds. Yeah. Uh, I just pulled this up to just kind of remember. But yeah, he, he's known as a men's rights attorney, but he did other cases too. He did cases for women, for custody. A lot of what he did had to do with um, uh, corruption. That's the word. Had to do with corruption uh, at the state and federal level. Had to do with corruption um, in terms of basic human rights, really. Uh, all sorts of stuff. He, he, he took a lot of different cases. So he wasn't just a men's rights attorney. Right, it wasn't just like that wasn't his sole duty, which there is no men's rights anything that's solely about men's rights. It's it's an inclusive movement. It's it's not exclusive like feminism. Okay, go to this one. 
I, uh, I'm primarily concerned about three issues which have been uh, brought to bear in my mind concerning the difference between men are treated and the difference between uh, women. Right. Number one concerns the emotional expressiveness that we permit women in the workplace. To give you one example, I work as a secretary and I've had about a 20 year career in various law firms here in New York City. One evening there was a female associate late at night in the word processing center who burst into tears because her job had been fouled up. The entire staff rushed forward with eno enormous emotional support for this woman. Had it been a man, folks would have recoiled in horror. What's wrong you. with him? Is he kind of a, a, a wimp? Right. Is yeah. he not tough enough no. to be working in this place? I, every time yeah. I start to cry at work, the office just empties. Like, yeah. I look up and I'm all alone. Uh, but That's actually kind of funny. Aren't you? you think that we ought to be able to be as expressive as women and not penalized for it? As uh, recently as 150 years ago here in New York City, it was not that unusual for two men to go walking down the street holding hands together. That's true. This is an option that is available to women. It doesn't mean something in particular. The way it means for two men to do that, that means they're boyfriends. Why can't we have this warm camaraderie that women have? Right. Another example at... So that good example, Bert and Ernie. Everyone thinks they're gay. They're not. Bert, I mean, Sesame Street might have made them gay within the past five years or so, just maybe, I mean, <laughs> but the characters themselves, at least way back when, when my father was watching that show, when he was younger, they they weren't gay. They, they were just friends who lived together. I, men can do that. Men can just live together and be buddies and nothing go on. Right. I mean, there was a Simpsons episode where Homer was the straight guy with a fucking gay couple living together, right? Like, I mean, you know, that men do all sorts of strange fucking, you know, bunkmate things, you know? I mean, um, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I've lived with women, I've lived with men, I, I mean, you know, I mean... I think only one of those times I was dating anyone that I was living with, but that was, I was, but I wasn't, it's a long story, but, uh, I think, oh, actually, no, not, maybe only once, maybe, I'm not sure, but anyways, well, I, I am now, obviously, I mean, I'm engaged to the woman I'm living with, but I'm talking, like, when I was homeless and stuff, um, but yeah, no, no, you're, you're right, the ale knows. The office. I was riding up the elevator recently, and two women who had been working late at night were tired, massaging one another on the shoulder. One leaned forward and rested her head against the head of the other one. This warm camaraderie and mutual can't tactile happen with support. Men. Something is wrong with me. The third issue concerns dress issues. At the law firms where I have worked over the years, he's talking about stuff in the workforce. I'm wearing a typical man's business suit. Right. What am I allowed to expose? My hands, the upper part of my neck, not the lower part, and my face. What is wrong with my body compared with a woman's? body that she's allowed to wear a low-cut neckline with a little bit of cleavage showing her entire arms if she cares to really? and an itty bitty witty teeny tiny mini skirt that covers as much as a strip of toilet paper wrapped around her hips <laughs> a stiletto high heel shoe makeup and hair down this way which makes right. her look as though she's going yeah. to a cocktail lounge yeah, as opposed to a workplace yeah. she's not a senior partner though right some of them are um, you'd be surprised well, hey, you'd be surprised out. yeah you, you know are you gonna come and help the man out he's making some points here well i i think uh, you should feel free to express yourself to the extent that it's appropriate in whatever setting you're ha you happen to be in so she literally just said yes you are correct i will not add on to that <laughs> what <laughs> yes that was true what you just said that's it <laughs> nothing to add <laughs> like <laughs> uh and because i think that would be better for men i mean i think Frankly, the men who are most dangerous to women are the ones who are stuck in rigid roles oh, God. and stereotypes where they feel they can't express themselves. Yeah. Most Male dangerous to women. That, that is fucking bullshit. My father is a very logical person. Very logical. And, I mean, he, he'll tell my mother that he loves her all the time, but he doesn't express that much. He does when he's spending time with her, but that's about it. Other than that, you know, he's he's very, okay, let's get this done. Let's do this. You know, get this, that, this, that. Okay, we're done. That's good. You did a good job. Good job. You know, that he's, that's how he, that's kind of how we talk. And he's never been violent to fucking any of us. And I can't think of 
anyone as rigid in gender role as my dad. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Like, nothing wrong with gender roles. I don't, I don't get why everyone's so pissed off about gender roles all of a fucking sudden. I mean, they're, you know, Pops is just, he, I mean, he's actually kind of a chill dude once you get to know him, but he's just, you know, military for so long, you know, it kind of, <laughs> it's, it's kind of what it does to you. Is dangerous. Generally, batterers are people who are male chauvinists who can't express themselves or feel they can't. Chauvinist. That that's a word that hasn't died since the fucking sixties. Violence yeah. against women. And so we die sooner. And we die sooner. It's safer for women. We, it's better we, 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 we agree quicker. here. We agree here. This yes. is very good. We yes. agree here. It's just woman... one thing. All of the research shows that men and women initiate domestic violence at exactly the yep. same rate. So if it's one type of man who's doing the violence, it's one type of woman too. You mean women are, yeah. wives absolutely. are just as violent as husbands? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Right here, in the right back row. Yes, ma'am. At the beginning of the show, we're surveyed if we think it's easier or, uh, or as easy right. to be a woman, but we're not surveyed as to whether or not it's harder to be a woman. Women are still doing most of the work at home. Oh, we're, we're pulling our weight uh, at the, in the workforce. Right. We're doing most of the child care. I applaud men who want to... We, 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 we have to work at home and in the, and in the workplace. Soda men, what? Are you, what? <laughs> In order for the first group of sentences to make any damn sense, the second group of sentences can't make any sense. Like, what? <laughs> Be 50 50 in child care and home right. care. That's not the norm still. Right. And women live in fear on the street and oh in our God. homes. Growing no. up in our relationships. They live in fear. I've addressed this in another video, but I'll address it again for sobriety's sake. Women are afraid more. Not because they're at more of a risk of violence, because they're not. Men are actually four to five times more likely to be assaulted on the street than a woman. That's more so true in cities than like Earl fucking, or is it Earl or Urban? Urban is a city, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Earl fucking, um, you know, like out in the country somewhere. Out in the country, no one's really getting assaulted. I mean, in cities, men are five times more likely to be assaulted. Uh, just on the street or or mo uh, mugged, mugged, robbed. I missed those words together. Rugged or mob? Damn it, mugged or robbed? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay robbed or mugged they're more likely to be that um but women are more afraid than men of being outside don't you think that has something to do with feminism don't you think it's something to do with i don't know uh we keep telling girls there's a rapist behind every shrub and there there's an axe wielding homicidal maniac behind every door and there's a woman eating bear behind every swamp and there's a, a, there's a giant baboon that eats people's heads and fucking snakes with no eyes and that are the color of flesh and, and Gagak is a fucking pool of blood. <laughs> Anyways, just, <laughs> if anyone gets those references, God bless you. God bless you. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's, women are more afraid Probably because we keep telling them there's there's a menacer behind every bush and tree and shrub. Thanks, feminism, for, for teaching girls that every man on the planet is a rapist. They, they literally believe in Schrodinger's rapist. Literally, they believe in Schrodinger's rapist. And, you know, um, like, fucking, you know, half the M&Ms are poisonous. Good luck, <laughs> right? That old fucking, which their logic is so shitty. And they always use M&Ms for some reason. They never use Skittles or whatever. Or fucking Pete's Heart Candy or whatever. Like, you know, they just, whatever. Anyways, they, they always use M&Ms for analogies. <laughs> but again, like, you know, it. women are more afraid probably because we keep telling them to be afraid. That's probably why. That and, I, I mean, psychologically, it makes sense why women would be more afraid because they're they are perceived as weaker and they know they're physically weaker therefore they feel like someone bigger and stronger is going to beat them up 
men feel that way too. If if they're a, if they're a short shit, yeah, they're gonna feel like some tall motherfucker is gonna come by and kick him in the face. Like that's that's just how people feel when they're meek and tiny and and compact and and especially if they're guys, unfortunately, because well, it's more so girls feel like it more, like it's more they're more vulnerable than guys who are tiny, but guys who are tiny get beaten up more than girls that are tiny <laughs> so it's you know whoops <laughs> yeah. Women live in fear. i see your ring you're a married woman yes i am and happily so obviously I'm and you feel you have feminist you are yes. uh, of course you, you are share, then. absolutely is... really well feel absolutely looking for your book there's not very, <laughs> we'll get you up here. There's not very many <laughs> right um feel, feel this is the husband with whom you uh, that's good because we'd have another story if this wasn't your husband <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's a shame he he doesn't know how to speak uh, <laughs> that's funny yeah guys i know you're thinking if, if you're in a love triangle with a girl you really like and she has a boyfriend that looks like this like this dude pasty uh uh not taking care of stub uh pasty kind of flabby looking she will choose him over you. You can look like Adonis and God combined. She will still choose the pasty, whiny looking dude over you. Every fucking time. You can quote me on that. She will pick this pasty little blob over a chilled Adonis any fucking day. Because these men are easier to control. They're easier to manipulate. They're easier to abuse, and they'll put up with your shit more. And for some reason, feminists really like, uh, you know, m men that w whisper sweet nothings in their ears as they stroke their hair, as they fall asleep gently in their arms, y you know, and, and then they wake up and want to be pinned to the ground and, and crammed in every orifice and, you know, so, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of women, again, not all, there's there's plenty of normal women out there. You just got to find them. Um, but a lot of women want two different men. They want the big, strapping, tall, jock goth to, to whip them and rough them up a bit and give them a good time. And then they want the, the placid little pasty, whiny little nerd to, to whisper sweet nothings in their ears as they fall asleep at night. Like, it... Just don't be involved in that bullshit. Just fucking leave. Just fucking... If you're in that situation, get the fuck out, bro. Just get out. People aren't worth risking your life over. And three-way triangle relationships don't fucking work. Polyamory typically doesn't work after you're 40, for some reason. Once you hit 40, it just... They all fall apart. I don't know why, but, you know, that's just, polyamory doesn't last very long. It really doesn't. <laughs> you know, that's essentially what I was describing was polyamory, but, you know, um, again, that, I just, I know people, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I've got another program. Uh, let's, yes, let's, Warren, let's please. Get, let's get something clear here. It is true that men, women work more in the home. Women work 11 hours per week on the average more than men do inside yes. the home. But yes. what we don't hear is the flip side of that coin, that men work 17 hours more per week on the average outside of the home. Mm -hmm. We also, we, and so th that needs to be elaborated. All the housework studies don't look carefully. Think about what's happening now. Men usually put up the Christmas tree. Men uh, will go out to shovel the snow. Men, um, What's so wrong with that? Poor baby, they're saying. Yeah. But, oh, but, poor baby. Yeah. Let us. Yeah. What? Maybe we should massage your back, or your arms are tired here. Uh, um, Phil, Phil. I see your but, point. It but, is true. And, that one and, other point, if I could just who's say that. Who's on the job? The, the woman who's folding the clothes and taking care of the child, or the man who's in a mine 
or is dangling from a building or working construction. Right. Men are dying on the job. They're right. making, taking longer Those commutes. are fewer and fewer their jobs Their jobs like are, that, are away from family, yeah. away from the support of family. It right. strains their mental health. Right. So they commit suicide yeah. four times more. Yes. Yeah. More. We, we Everything is ever true. More than women do for the same work. Men do earn more than women do for 25 right. different behaviors at work. All right. More hazardous jobs, more commuting, more hours on the job, that type of thing. I tell you what, I think it's going to get yeah. work in the globe. It's going to get it's worse more in hazardous. the global marketplace. Because women are now more hireable all over the world, to be sure, at rates that aren't uh, of pay that are not fair. But nevertheless, it's the guy who is much less employable than is the woman. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Which I two out of two. So uh, they just ended it on a fucking cliffhanger, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's more Warren Farrell and stuff. I. I Warren Farrell, I, I got nothing against him. I mean, he he seems like a really nice dude, um, you know. But he's kind of he's kind of vanilla. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not not in a bad way, not in a bad way. I don't mean any disrespect by it, but he's he, he's very soft spoken and very very almost quiet and very kind of kind of keep to himself. He's very well spoken and very organized and whatnot. And I'm I'm used to like people like my pops and I who are just like you know they just shout halfway across the hallway, <laughs> but they're not like yelling at each other. They're just like, "Hey, get in here! What? What do you need? Well, I want to show you something. Okay, be there in a minute. Like that that kind of stuff, right? Like that's just I'm I'm used to that, right? Like so it's just kind of weird for me to see a guy that's very quiet and well to do and and you know well kind of kept to himself and everything it's it's just it's just odd to me that's all but <laughs> you know um oh wow what the hell uh <laughs> but yeah again like you know just yeah i wanted to kind of interview the importance of fathers uh yeah yeah i think that's about it uh y'all take care i uh, hope you enjoy the video um sacrifice a soul to the cat sammy one of the archdukes of hell <laughs> uh no that's a reference anyways uh <laughs> yeah I've got, i'm full of references just yeah um you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna give you guys a bonus i'm gonna give you guys a bonus how about i just i was gonna do this go over this and how full of bullshit it is because they do not this, this whole page is written by a feminist and it really shows because of how they masculinism masculism isn't a thing uh, yeah uh, meninism isn't a thing it's a fucking joke so yeah this this whole article is just total bullshit and and to, to kind of prove it, I wanted to do some quotes. Here are feminist quotes, right? Quotes from feminists that you make that will make you rethink feminism. I feel that man hating is an honorable and viable political act. That the oppression have a, the oppressed have a right to class hatred against the class that is oppressing them. Robin Morgan, Miss Magazine editor. The nuclear family must be destroyed, whatever its ultimate meaning. The breakup of families now is an objectively revolutionary process. Linda Gordon. I want to see a man beaten to a bloody pulp with a high heel shoved in his mouth like in the apple in the mouth of a pig. Andrea Dworkin, you sweet monster. Um, yeah, um, more. Oh, leader of the feminist organization now. The organization that was just mentioned at the beginning of this video. Since marriage constitutes slavery for women, it is clear that the women's movement must concentrate on attacking this institution. See, here's a problem with feminism. They keep calling it the women's movement. You're not women's rights advocates. You're not. Quit pretending to be. You're, you're not. The women's movement is the women's domination movement. Right? It's not the women's equality movement, it's the women's domination movement. As in women dominate everyone the fuck else. <laughs> that's 
yeah, it, they, they keep calling themselves this. Don't don't let them get away with calling themselves this, because that is a mislabel. That is a that's like calling myself a Mennonist. It 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 doesn't it doesn't mean what I claim it to mean. It just it it's fucking derp elephant pigeon salad. Andrea Dworkin, God, ugh, geez, that woman, ugh, the most hateful woman I've ever heard about. Um, no, I'm thinking about Valerie Solanas. I have hiccups. Uh, now let's like those are just some feminist quotes. Let's look at the MRA quotes that are against women. Um. Uh, th that Reddit. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna trust that. <laughs> That's probably a bunch of bullshit, anyways. Uh. Okay. Quotes for women on strength and power. Inspirational quotes by powerful women. For MRA arguments, actually have a point. Okay. Men and women quotes. 50 powerful quotes about women. Like, it just, there, there are no list of, uh, you know, MRA quotes about women. There is no list. Because we don't hate women. We're, we're not vocal haters of anybody. That's why there's no easy list of quotes like there is in the fucking thought catalog. There's this easy list of quotes. Uh, 23 of them, to be precise. There are 23 quotes of feminists hating men. Zero quotes of MRAs hating women. Well, I'll be, Skippy. I think you got me beat. <laughs> okay, like... Anyways, I just want to throw that in there. That's a little bonus for you guys. Y'all take care. Um, don't die, for the love of God. Stay away from Corona, Chan. She's evil.